The ultimate goal of any dogfight is to kill your adversary. A good fighter pilot will use basic fighter maneuvering skills to go on the offensive and win the battle. And that's what we'll focus on today. So far in this series on basic fighter maneuvers, we've covered terminology and how to understand the performance of a fighter. Now it's time for some hands-on experience in BFM. In this video, we'll go over the first of three real-world offensive BFM exercises, the heat to guns exercise. This is a great introductory exercise since it covers all the fundamentals of offensive BFM. And we'll go through it step by step so you can fly it with a friend and get hands-on experience. Now before we begin, I want to be clear this is not a beginner level video. So you need to have some prerequisites. As we go through offensive BFM, it'll be with the understanding that you know the topic shown below. There will be links in the description in case you need to review them. The first exercise we'll cover is known as the heat to guns exercise and it's a great introduction to BFM because it hits a lot of BFM's fundamental skills. To be successful in the heat to guns exercise, you're going to have to find and enter the bandit's turn circle, get in the control zone, then manage range, angles, and closure to get a good firing solution. Here's the official diagram of the exercise. We'll step through this first, then take a look at it from inside the cockpit. We begin at line abreast, flying at 410 knots. The lead aircraft then calls, next set will be heat to guns exercise for two. The number two aircraft responds too. Then lead calls push it up to get airspeed up to brief parameters, and again, number two responds with two. When lead calls ready, two will respond with either a ready or a standby. Now, unlike all the rest of the offensive and defensive BFM exercises that we'll cover in this series, this one goes straight into the exercise without a perch setup. And this happens when lead calls fights on. When fights on is called lead, who is playing the part of the bandit, will turn 90 degrees away from two. This turn will be made at mill power pulling 4Gs. If you remember from our EM diagram discussion, this 4G mill power turn is well below the maximum turn performance of the jets we'll be using in this exercise. So when the bandit is limited to this reduced performance turn, the blue fighter, who will be making the turn without any limits, should be able to easily get inside the turn for the next part of this exercise the FOX-2 shot. At the end of this first 90 degree turn, the blue aircraft, which we'll refer to as the fighter from now on, will make a simulated attack with a heat-seeking missile. The F-5s we'll be using can carry the captive AIM-9 missile, which is a version of the AIM-9 without a rocket motor. This captive missile will give us the audio cues we need to know if we have a valid shot. Once the fighter makes the FOX-2 call, then the bandit will make a follow-on turn. This turn can be in either direction, but will have the same limits as the last one. 4G, mill power, and level with the horizon. The only difference will be that the bandit will slow down to 350 knots during the turn. The purpose of the slowdown is to introduce range and closure problems that the fighter will need to solve. The fighter will have to close the gap to get within range for a gun solution, but that has to be done without overshooting the bandit. In the extended trail exercise video, we covered a couple techniques for doing this. The lead reposition to help with closing the gap, and the lag reposition if we need to slow our closure and improve our aspect angle. The fighter will use these techniques to enter the bandit's turn circle, and then get into the bandit's control zone for the next and most critical part. The control zone is where we can make an assessment to see if we're ready to move in for a gunshot. There are three things we're looking for when making that assessment. 3,000 feet of range, 30 degrees of aspect angle, and steady, controllable closure. These are referred to as the rule of threes, and when we have all three, we'll pull the nose up until we have the bandit in our gun sight. Having all three gives us the best chance for a valid shot. So how do we know we satisfy these rules? It's instinct that comes from practice. In real life, a fighter pilot will have had a lot of practice judging range by this point, and it's because of all the hours spent in formation training. But I know not everyone watching this will have that experience. Estimating range in real life is done with visual references on the bandit's aircraft. Now these might not be easy to see within our sim, but we do have something else available to help out with that. It's called stadiometric ranging. We can get range by seeing how large the bandit is in our gun sight. 
If the wingspan looks large enough to fill the entire ring, then the range is about 500 feet. Half the ring is 1,000, and if it fits between two of these smaller marks, then that makes the range about 3,000, which is half a mile. You can also just turn on labels until you get better at estimating range. So how about aspect angle? If we look at this chart, we can see that the fuselage of our jet is longer than the wingspan. So when we're at 90 degrees AA, we can draw a rectangle around it. That rectangle shape holds true until we get down to 30 degrees AA. Now that imaginary box is shaped like a square. So if the fuselage appears to be the same length as the wingspan, then you're looking at the 30 AA sight picture. We've discussed using lag and lead repositions to fix problems with range and closure. But there's an additional reposition we can use if we only need to make a small adjustment to AA, and that's called the Ease Reposition, or Ease Repo for short. If your range and closure look good but your aspect is a little high, you can fix it by easing back on the stick and making your turn circle a little wider. Aspect should shrink, and once it looks good, you can resume your original pull and reassess. If you do everything right as the fighter, then you should be able to go through the entire exercise to get a valid Fox 2 shot, followed by a valid gunshot. So what exactly is a valid gunshot if you're not firing rail bullets? A shot is considered valid under the following conditions. The bandit must be inside 2,500 feet, the pipper has to be on the bandit, and the trigger is held down. If you meet all three of those conditions for half a second, it's considered a tracking shot. Anything less than half a second is a snapshot. You need a total of half a second to complete the exercise. You can use a tool like TACView to verify validity or just work on the honor system. Now let's take a look at this exercise from inside the cockpit. We begin this exercise at line abreast and roll into a turn towards the bandit it fights on. Now we do a max performance turn and work on getting a good sidewinder tone. After you make a Fox 2 call on the radio, the bandit will take the second turn. Now you want to look for a high LOS rate on the bandit to make your turn circle entry. If you make the turn too late, you'll end up like this looking at the bandit's belly and outside his turn circle. Turning too early can also cause problems. You can end up like this, where your only option is a long range, high aspect snapshot. So make sure to get that turn circle entry right. Once you're on his turn circle, move up into the bandit's control zone and look for this sight picture. It's about one fist above the canopy bow. Remember the rule of threes. 3,000 feet of range, 30 degrees AA, and steady, controlled closure. In this case, our aspect looks good because we can draw a square around the bandit. But if it was a little too high, we could always do an ease repo to lower it. With the rule of three satisfied, we can now move in for guns. Just remember to get a total of half a second of trigger downtime on the bandit for a valid kill. As you're doing this exercise, one thing you might want to try is adding a pass-fail condition. One condition that worked for me was setting a turn limit of 180 degrees after the Fox 2. If a pilot can get a valid gunshot within the 180 degree turn, then they understand the learning objectives of this exercise. But if not, then we can go over problem areas in the debrief. This is really easy to implement too. The bandit just calls out once 180 degrees has been reached. So if you started the exercise flying due north, then a valid gunshot needs to be made before reaching the big E on the compass. We went over a lot, so let's do a quick recap. The heat to guns exercise begins at line abreast with the fights on call. Both aircraft then make a 90 degree turn towards the bandit with the fighter going for a valid Fox 2 shot. Next, the bandit executes another turn while slowing down to present the fighter with range and closure problems. The exercise ends with the valid gunshot, that means a total of half a second of trigger downtime with the pipper on the bandit. It's also important to do a good debrief after each exercise. This is where you can work out any problems you might have encountered. In the next video in this series, we'll cover two more exercises for offensive BFM. Until then, make sure to practice this exercise with a friend, and thanks for watching.